It had been four and a half months since Riley Fox disappeared, and there's this growing pressure on the chief prosecutor, Jeff Tomczak, uh, for some sort of break in the case. And there's this other dynamic playing out that people recognize, which is that he was in the fight of his political life. I mean, election day was a week away. Jeff Tomczak wants to be reelected. He's got a tough opponent. The, the race is tight. We have the toughest prosecutor's office in Illinois. That's what I've done for Will County, and uh, that's what I'm proud to continue to do for the next four years. Tomczak seemed to be in an increasingly uh, losing battle for the state's attorney's race. There are some who begin to wonder, you know, would a high-profile arrest help his campaign? On October 26th, police contacted Kevin and Melissa. There had been developments in the case. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this is it. They found the person. Like, we're going to know what happened. Now it's the evening. Kevin's been working since 4.30 that morning. But of course, he and Melissa want to know what happened to their little girl. They go down to the police station. And then when they get there, they immediately separate them. They took her down a hallway, and they took me. Um, it was like a room up on a stage. You walk up the stairs, and then it was real, real small room. It's a little tiny room more comparable to a cell and they have him pinned back in the corner of the room. Most interrogation rooms inside police stations are specially designed, no windows, no clock, nothing to connect the suspect to the outside world. They have the capacity to videotape the entire interrogation, but they don't. I am the CEO of Evidence Video. Uh, we've been asked to uh, do a recreation based on the testimony of Kevin Fox. I hired actors and I actually had Kevin involved in it and we recreated the whole interrogation of what had happened. We have actors and we are recreating the interrogation based on the best of your recollection. Sit down over there. Scott told me to sit down and, um, and then they were asking me about the night and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he's, he looked at me and said, we have reason to believe that you killed, killed Riley. Tell us the truth. I didn't kill Riley. Sit your ass down. you. I freaked out. I stood up and started pointing in his face, saying, you know I didn't do this. I took a couple steps, and he's like, sit your ass down. Sit your ass down. Well, what he said, he was just berated, barraged, yelling, swearing being threatened. I didn't kill my daughter. They said they just, they just wore him down psychologically, emotionally, just tag teaming him left to right, left to right, left to right. Kevin says detectives then offer him a lie detector test. And he says one of the things they tell him is that this test could actually prove that he wasn't involved in his daughter's death. They asked you, will you take a polygraph test? They kept on saying that they knew I'd flunk the polygraph test. And so you said, I'll take it. It was kind of like uh, they're they egging me on. The you test says anymore? you killed Riley. $10,000 piece of equipment says you killed your daughter. I did not kill my yes, daughter. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Now, this is a commonly I used guess. ruse during police interrogation. Get the suspect to take a lie detector test, then tell them they failed it. As part of that process of breaking them down, of making them feel hopeless. I, I was just shocked. I couldn't have failed it. That's when things really get intense. The police bring Melissa into Kevin. Kevin failed the test. Means he killed your daughter. I don't believe that at all. I think they were really upset that the second I let Kevin know, I don't believe them, it's OK. They didn't want me anywhere near him. In that moment, Detective Ed Hayes, according to a lawsuit later filed, blew up. Liar, you murder and got right in Melissa's face and said, you are kill your daughter and he's a liar. The Will County Sheriff's Office says that Kevin's account of this interrogation is exaggerated, that it's not accurate. They deny you know, ever trying to intimidate or threaten him. And Sergeant Hayes says that, that he never yelled at Melissa. Kevin says the police came to him during his interrogation and said, look, either you're this cold-blooded baby killer, in which case it's life in prison, or 
if you tell us that this was a result of some accident, things will be easier for you. That's how they get Kevin talking. Just tell us about an accident. So keep in mind, he'd been up since 4.30 that morning. He'd gone to work. Now he's in the middle of this 14-hour interrogation, and he confesses to it. The police construct a theory that he adopts in which Riley's killed accidentally, and he then stages it to look like a murder. Kevin had gotten up in the middle of the night, opened the bathroom door, struck her in the head with this door, knocked her out. And he didn't know what to do. So then he said, well, he would uh, make it look like a stranger had come in and done this, stages, if you will, a sexual assault, and then takes her to the creek and drowns her. I mean, that is an utterly preposterous story. He says, I thought everybody would see it as crazy. He said, I really thought that they would understand that this couldn't possibly have happened. Did you have anything to do with the death of your daughter? <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. A lot of people will want to know, if you didn't kill Riley, how, how do you possibly confess to it? Say you were trapped in a, a burning room. And, and there was only one door, and the fire was just flaming around you. So you looked at this as your only way out? It was my only way out. He thought this was his only way out. What, can you tell me another way out? What would you do? After an all-night interrogation, police and prosecutors gathered to announce Kevin Fox had confessed. Mr. Fox gave a statement that has led detectives to believe that he killed his daughter after placing her in a nearby creek. These detectives, I, I want to say, and it's their instincts. Their instincts, their, their investigative instincts that led to this statement coming down. It was just unthinkable. A father would do this to his own three-year-old girl, his daughter, a daughter that he adored. Oh, my God. A young girl's father now accused of a brutal crime that stunned this rural community. We were sitting there saying to ourselves, did we get fooled by this guy? Was that a, that was that an act? He gets arrested. He gets taken to the Will County Jail and booked. First degree murder in connection with the death of his three-year-old daughter. Um, they brought me to the booking room, and the first thing I heard, one of the guards said, uh, hey, we got the baby Riley killer. And I, I kind of like looked around because I, I wanted I wanted to see him too. And, uh, and she, I realized she was talking to me. What about the uh, issue of this being politically motivated? You know, this is about your upcoming election. It's just crazy. I mean, the arrest of the defendant was caused by his actions himself. Prosecutors announced they plan to seek the death penalty against Kevin Fox. The judge set bond at $25 million. I wasn't going to let my brother be executed. So Chad approached Kathleen Zellner, a terrific attorney, and said, my brother needs help. I decided to take a chance on him. Our position is that my client's innocent. I just felt like he was somebody that was really worth trying to save. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.